Uh, last Thursday, Speaker Boehner called President Obama, quote, absolutely crazy, end quote, for moving forward with rules to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from power plants that cause global warming. What I think is absolutely crazy is the Republicans' constant denial of the overwhelming scientific consensus that climate change is real and human activity is largely responsible. I think it's absolutely crazy that the Republicans voted more than 50 times in the last Congress to block action on climate change. In March, I talked about a new peer-reviewed uh, report uh, from Oregon State and Harvard that looked at temperatures over the last 11,300 years. And they found that over the last 100 years, coinciding with the widespread use of fossil fuels and turbines, et cetera, uh, that we have seen more temperature increase than over the previous 11,000 years. 100 years versus 11,000 years. Last month, I came to the floor again to talk about a new NOAA report. Oceans are warming, fish stocks, many commercial fish stocks are moving north. Other things which aren't capable of moving are, are deteriorating in, uh, in stocks. And then uh, on the West Coast, we've had shellfish uh, failures due to ocean acidification. Uh, and the shellfish, of course, uh, are only an indication of what might happen to the rest of the food chain in the oceans. No one denies the acidification is due to the CO2 in the atmosphere. But the do-nothing Republican Congress just shrugs and says there's nothing to do. But unlike the Republicans, President Obama accepts the science, and in about two hours, the President will release a plan to combat climate change here at home and lay out steps for working with some of the world's largest polluters, including India and China, to reduce emissions abroad. The details aren't all out yet, but he's, the President's proposing to do something that we, I said we should do five years ago. That is, use the regulatory powers of the Clean Air Act to regulate new and existing power plants. That's responsible for almost 40% of our greenhouse gas emissions. We can make a huge dent in our emissions by moving forward on responsible, flexible efficiency standards for coal and natural gas plants. As the administration moves forward, it should take a close look at the climate plan outlined by the Natural Resources Defense Council. Their plan has two key elements. Set state-specific emission rates to reflect the diversity of the nation's electricity sector and give power plant operators broad flexibility to meet those standards in the most cost-effective way through a range of existing technologies. The standards for every state would be an overall emission rate average of all the fossil fuel plants, and individual plants could admit at a higher or lower rate. Each covered plant with an emission rate above the state standard can meet the target by retrofitting, more efficient boiler, installing carbon capture, or it could burn a mixture of coal and cleaner fuels, such as gas and or biomass. The plan would allow for the owners of multiple power plants to average emissions, the rates of their plants, and meet the required emission rate on average by running coal plants less often, increasing generation from cleaner sources, or integrating more renewable resources. Such an approach that is both flexible and state-based is exactly what makes the Clean Water Act one of our most successful environmental and public health statutes in history. Mr. Speaker, it's time to listen to scientists, get serious about climate change. The evidence is in. The President has a plan. The Supreme Court has given him the authority to regulate. The only question now is whether the Republican leadership in the House of Representatives will listen and act. With that, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back his time. The chair recognizes